What's going on guys? Welcome to another episode. So if you guys are following me on Instagram, you'll know and you'll have an idea as to what I've been up to lately. So the mini is actually getting some work done to it. So I'm gonna be sending all of the bottom end stuff out to a machine shop so they can balance up the bottom end and everything is going to be nice and good. So what do I mean by that? Why would you wanna balance the bottom end of your engine? Well, think of it like this. When you go ahead to any kind of tire shop and you replace the tires, after the tires have been swapped and you have new ones on there, what they'll do is they'll balance the entire rotating assembly. So they will balance the wheel and tire as one unit, and if there's any kind of irregularity in it, they will add weights so that it's nice and smooth. Now, if you don't go ahead and do that, when you're driving at like low speeds, you're not gonna notice any difference. But if you get up to highway speeds, you are 100% going to notice any kind of imbalance because you're gonna feel that through the steering wheel. Now, the same thing kind of goes with the engine. Now, if you go ahead and replace the crankshaft or you go ahead and replace your connecting rods or pistons and you change any kind of that stuff, what's going to happen is you're gonna to need to get that all rebalanced because if you have any kind of irregularity or any kind of vibration through the crankshaft, when you rev out the car, you're going to have an issue. So you could potentially kill your bearings, you could blow your motor, you could have some sort of thing go wrong and that wouldn't exactly be good, especially if you're putting so much money into your car to get it up and running. So what we're gonna be doing today is we're gonna be going through all the weights of everything that's going to be rotating and we're gonna be just preparing it so that once I drop it off on Monday, I know it's gonna be in good hands. I know that all the measurements are gonna be good. Now I'm gonna make it so that the weight of everything is super, super close. So the reason why you'd wanna do that is because if you can make it so that they take out less stuff from the crankshaft so they can balance it easier, it's going to be a better option. So on my cart here, I have everything that's going to be getting attached to the crankshaft. So in this box, I have all the new pistons, I have the wrist pins, I have these wire locks which attach the wrist pin into the piston. In this box here, I have the brand new forged connecting rods, all from Supertech. Same with all these parts here. I have all the piston rings, so there's going to be a couple of them found inside this set. You're going to have the top ring, the oil ring, and just everything that's going to be connecting to the outside perimeter of the pistons. So you can see that we've got four of them in there. Okay, so we're gonna be setting all that stuff aside now, but I'm just gonna show you what I have. I also have all the bearings for the connecting rods. So these here sit inside the large end of the con rod. So it'll sit inside of here, and this end will connect up to the crankshaft. Now over here, this is the super important part that I'm gonna be using today. This is a little digital scale. So you can see it's got covers on it to protect the sensors in it. But what we're going to be doing is we're going to make sure that every single one of these pistons is the same weight. Now, if they aren't, what we're going to do is we're going to remove weight from them um, so that we can make a very precise engine. So all these measurements here, these are all 259 grams. They all weigh that, but they are very minutely different. And you can see that when you throw it on the scale. I'm gonna to get to that in a second, but I first want to show you everything else that needs to be in the rotating assembly. We need to prepare everything. This here is my new Clutch Masters flywheel, clutch setup, pressure plate, everything. So what I'm gonna be doing is disconnecting the pressure plate along with the clutch disc from the lightweight flywheel because we need to send out this flywheel with the crankshaft along with these bolts to get balanced. So because this here is always gonna be connected to the crank, this all needs to be going out. Now not only that, the, the crankshaft has to go with it, obviously, because we're balancing this along with all of those. So when this is gone to get sent out to get balanced, what's going to get done is they're actually going to machine a little bit of metal inside each one of these counterweights to properly balance the motor. So you can see that we've got a hole there, we have a hole there, we have a tiny little hole there, and these little precise measurements and these little uh, inserts, if you will, into each one of the counter shafts, they are super important because it makes it so that the entire rotating assembly is completely balanced. You're not going to remove weight from a piston or a connecting rod, you're going to remove the weight to balance it from the crankshaft itself. Now not every motor is like this. You might have a bearing or something else on the outside of the motor that is there to balance everything. You might have it at the end of the crankshaft or you might have it like this. Every design is different but it still needs to be balanced up together once you go ahead and take the pistons off and you replace it all with new stuff. So these pistons and connecting rods are the parts that came out of my mini motor. So these are all cast parts. You can see we have the bearings here. We have the connecting rod right here. We have the John Cooper Works 10.0 to one compression uh, pistons. So these here are an upgrade over the Cooper S pistons and you can see that they've got a design like that. 
The components that you see here are all casted. So they were made from a mold, the metal was poured into that mold, and then you get a finish like this. So you can tell if you get a close up of it that the finish isn't super smooth. Now it works, it does the trick. This is the cheapest way to make a part. However, there are much better ways to get that done and that is by forging the metal. So you can see if you look at the, the pistons or even the connecting rods, these here look absolutely beautiful. Even on the inside part. So these are coated, but you can see that there's no rough anything on the piston. Okay, so it's got a slightly different design. This here is a 9.5 to 1 compression ratio piston. So this is actually going to make us more power because it's going to allow us to put more air and more fuel into the engine. So because we have our big turbo, these here are going to be a perfect solution with that. So if we also go ahead and take a look at the connecting rod. This connecting rod here is also forged, just like the piston. So you'll be able to see there's no irregularities in this unit. So when we take this out, you can see that this is a very nice, high quality piece. You can see we've got the part number right there. We've got new ARP bolts found on each ends of the Conrod. There you go, it's made for an R56. So these here are a nice upgrade over the stock stuff. Now if you guys are running a Cooper S, you guys can put these parts in there and it's gonna be an even bigger upgrade than if you were to just throw in John Cooper Works stuff. However, if you guys do decide to go with a John Cooper Works turbo, those components there are ideal because that stuff is made for that turbocharger. Now, at the end of the day, it entirely depends on what kind of setup you want, but because I'm gonna be going for big turbo, I'm going for big power, I'm going for the best numbers possible, I want something that is absolutely bulletproof. So it doesn't matter what kind of setup you want, Casting is good, but it can be better, and that is where these forged parts come in handy. So I'm going to throw each of these components on the scale, and we're going to measure how much of a weight difference there is between each of these pieces. Okay, so we're first going to begin by measuring the weight of one of these pistons. So this right here is our Supertech piston. It's got the part number on the side, and this here says that it's a 259 gram piston. So they've all been weighed, they all should be the same. However, when you put them on a scale, you'll actually be able to see that there is a difference indeed. So we're gonna move these covers. We're gonna get to the connecting rod in a second and how you're gonna measure that, but in the meantime, we're gonna be using a scale like this. So we're gonna turn it on, see how it's set to zero. So then you just put that on top of it. So 259.29. Take it off, spin it, put it down again. 259.29. Do the same thing. And you're basically gonna get an average. So you can see how it's like slightly different. So you're gonna do this a couple times and we can basically average it to be 259.3. Well, That's what I got, but you can see that it's coming up differently every time. Three, two. Make sure it goes back to zero. Try it again. So it's about that, okay, so see right there. So let's call it 2.9. So we're gonna mark that number down and then we're gonna do the same thing for all the other pistons. So I actually got it so that it was 259.3. I did the same things for the other ones. I got 259.29. On this one here, I got 259.07. So that's a big difference. 259.18 for this one. So what we're essentially going to do is we're going to make each of the heavier pistons weigh the exact same thing as the lightest one. So this one here is 259.07. So we're not going to be touching this one at all as that is the lightest one, but we're going to be removing uh, about 20 milligrams from this piston here so we can try and match that. We're going to do the same thing with this one by removing 0.1 gram and basically 0.2 grams, a little bit more from this one here. Now the way that you would do it is you have to remove weight in a very specific place. You can't remove it from the face of it. You can't remove it from the side. You can't remove it from the skirt. What we're gonna do is we're gonna remove it from the inside part of here. So we're gonna remove the excuse of weight. So just to give you guys an idea as to how little amount of weight we're going to be removing from this piston, I wanna show you some weights of other common things that you guys probably have. So this here is a 10 millimeter socket. This comes in at 38 grams. So that's a lot heavier. This is a lot more weight that we're gonna be removing from the piston. We're gonna be moving now down to a 12 millimeter bolt. This weighs 10 grams. So this is still way too much metal. If you remove that much weight from your piston, it's basically shot. This next here is a pistachio, okay? That weighs 
a gram and a half. That still is way too much, okay? Now, if we were to grab half of the shell from that pistachio, that is still too much weight. If you were to go ahead and cut that pistachio shell in half, that is essentially how much weight you would be removing from this piston. So it just goes to show you really don't need to take off that much material. So that's why when you're taking off the material from here, you wanna go as slow as possible, double check a million times because if you remove too much, you're gonna be making the piston weaker. So you just wanna remove just enough to make it so that's in spec with all the other pistons, but not enough to compromise the strength and integrity of this guy here. So this is not a cheap piston, that's why you wanna take your time with it and do this properly. So what I'm gonna be using to remove some of that weight is going to be a Dremel with a 120 grit sanding disc on the end of it. Now, of course, you're gonna need your eye protection. Now, one thing to consider before you start going ahead to remove weight from the piston or any other engine component, I would try removing weight from something that's similar so you kind of have an idea as to how much weight you're gonna be taking off per second. I'm going to throw it on my scale and it weighs 45 grams on the money. Now, once you go ahead and you start removing weight from this, you're gonna have an idea as to how fast and how much more meat you can remove from your piston. So I'm just gonna use this for two seconds. Okay, so let's see what it weighs now. So I removed 0 0.02 grams by just doing that. So if you guys take that kind of concept and you apply it to your piston, you won't be going over. So you're only going to be removing as much material as you need and nothing more. So with that being said, I'm gonna get started to remove some material on the inside part of the piston. So just double check the weight of this beforehand. Verify that it's the proper weight that we have. So we're gonna be removing 0.2 grams from this piston here. So I'm gonna begin by removing some material on this side, on this side, and this side, and this side. So what I'm trying to achieve is I'm gonna be removing the same amount of material from each corner of the piston. That way we're gonna have a nice balanced piston both forwards and backwards and left to right. So with that done, you can see there's a little bit of material that we removed from the sides. And if we put this on our scale, we removed almost nothing. We removed 0 0.01 gram. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna switch out this bit here. So this is a 120 grit sanding roll. I'm gonna switch it out for a carbide milling bit. So these bits right here are 1 8 inch shanks. So this is a perfect size for a little Dremel. So I'm gonna use this little fine one there. You can see how it's nice and pointy. There's many different ones in this kit that you guys can choose from. So you're just gonna load this in there just like the other one. And then we're gonna start removing a little bit more weight from the piston. Now it's important to blow it out because you don't wanna have any of those shavings in there because that'll alter the weight of what we're trying to do. So we're gonna try and clean that out as best we can, throw it back on the scale. We're getting a little bit closer. We removed 0 0.05 grams by doing that. So I'm just gonna repeat this procedure until I match my target weight of 259.08. You can see it right now that it is 259.21. Okay, so we're moving a little bit more. So I've got about 0.1 more and a bit to go. After using the carbide bit and measuring and double checking about five times, I've been able to get a perfect target weight of 259.08. So this piston here I am done with and I'm gonna set this aside with the other one that weighs the exact same amount. So you can tell how much material I actually removed from the inside and you can see it's a very uniform, consistent removal on the inside parts of the piston. So you don't wanna remove any material from the crown, from the sides or anywhere else other than the sides up top inside the piston. So once you're done with one piston, you can repeat the same procedure to the remaining ones until every one of them weighs the exact same. Now you don't have to go to within one hundredth of a gram. As long as you get within the tenth of a gram, you're gonna be good. However, if you wanna spend that extra time, you can go ahead and do that because it really costs you nothing other than a little bit of your time. 
So if you're doing this and you want to get this done right, that's how it's done. So three of the four pistons are now done. I next need to work on the connecting rods, but I can't exactly do that. Now, I will describe to you how to get that done, um, but I don't have the proper tools to actually perform that procedure. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring these and send them to the machine shop where they will go ahead and balance them themselves. The way that you would balance this is you would have one end here Support it up in the air and then you'd have a scale on the other side You would then measure how much that weighs and then you'd make all of them weigh the same way from that After that's done you would then spin this around and do the exact same thing, but to the other side so you would then support The small end of the connecting rod and then you'd balance and weigh and shave off a little bit of material on the big end of the connecting rod So you would do that exact same procedure to all four of them You would balance and remove weight from the wrist pins as well I will get to that in a second, but all that you'd basically do is remove a little bit of the material on the parts that aren't touching anything. So you'd remove a little bit of meat from the inside diameter of the wrist pin. Once that's all done, you're gonna send out the flywheel, the crankshaft, the connecting rods, the pistons, the wrist pins, the bearings, anything that is moving inside the bottom end of the motor, you would send out. So if you have a harmonic balancer, you'd send that out with them. If you have a bolt that connects stuff through, something or whatever to the crankshaft, you would send that with it as well. Whatever you can send to the machine shop to get balanced, the better of a job they can do and the better your engine is going to run long term. So what I'm actually going to have to do next, after I'm done doing those pistons, I'm going to have to go ahead and remove the pressure plate along with the clutch plate inside of there from the flywheel because the flywheel has to be sent out too. There's a lot that actually goes down should you guys ever want to do this kind of engine rebuild or even an upgraded build. So if I was just redoing my engine and cleaning out it, you know, I wouldn't have to go through all these procedures. But because I'm going with built internals and I'm upgrading everything, why not do the best you can now? Now another option that you guys consider is called crankshaft knife edging. So what they do is they would shave down a lot of material from the crankshaft. What they would do is they shave this down so it literally looks like pointy like a knife. It not only makes it more aerodynamic so once it goes through uh, the oil in the bottom of the engine, it's, not, it's just going to literally slice through it. But also it's going to be removing a lot of weight from the crankshaft and that is a big part of it. The less mass you have, the less rotational inertia you have, the faster the crankshaft is going to want to rotate and the easier it's going to want to rotate. So if those pistons are pushing down at a certain strength or a certain speed, you're going to be able to translate that power to your wheels much better with a lighter crankshaft. I can literally talk all day about the different things that you guys can do to an engine once you have it apart, but I'm not going to go to that extent only because this isn't a purebred race car. I want this to somewhat drive normal. I want it to be somewhat predictable, you know, a relatively easy car to drive on the street. If I was going for full-blown race car, I would get a six-puck clutch. I'd be going absolutely ridiculous with this, and I wouldn't be able to afford my Z or even the Audi for that matter because all of my money will be going into this. You could spend easily $100,000 in an engine if you send stuff out, get it done right and you want the best of the best. I don't need the best of the best, I just want very good. And you can save yourself a little bit of money by doing this kind of machining work here at home. That's what I'm showing you guys today in this video and I hope you guys learned a thing or two. YouTube is a great tool, you can find a lot more information out there. Um, if you guys have any questions regarding this process or the tools that I use, check the description box. Throw something in the comment section if you guys got a comment. Anyways guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.